the sheer audacity of what's going on in the wake of the collapse of the mainstream comic book industry is something that has to be seen to be believed. Following the announcement of Marvel cutting off a whole line of new comic book production, it appears that a number of professionals and prominent commenters have finally moved past the denial phase and landed squarely on anger. And for reasons that are not unexpected, but at the same time incredibly ironic, they've turned that anger almost squarely on the shoulders of Comicsgate. For anyone uninitiated, Comicsgate evolved out of a small, potent movement of YouTubers criticizing the decline of mainstream comic book content and the bad behavior of a number of professionals working in the industry, and especially those who align with identity politics obsessed social justice warriors. The group gained little notoriety until Richard C. Meyer came on board with his channel Diversity in Comics. For whatever reason, Richard, also known as your boy Zach, just seemed to capture the voice of the people in a way that until then no one else had. And for the first time in a long time, the completely converged comic book industry had to contend with a critic that they couldn't shame into silence and a critic who was gaining thousands of followers month by month. Zack didn't pull any punches, and explained in a clear, accessible, and entertaining way exactly how, why, and what had gone wrong with mainstream comic books. And boy, did they unleash the mob onto Zack. Not only onto Zack, but anyone even remotely related to Zack. Being associated with diversity in comics in 2017 was the equivalent of a scarlet letter on your door. This was a display of the culture war at its most toxic. They tried to destroy Richard C. Meyer's life. Their methods were brutal and their end goal was clear. Beat him down until he eventually either gave up or killed himself. It was that brutal. But even in the midst of all this, Zack never seemed to give up hope on mainstream comics, launching the hashtag MoveTheNeedle in an attempt to put some power back into the hands of his newly found audience, enabling them to show creators and publishers directly exactly the kinds of comic books they were buying, instead of leaving it up to false, inflated numbers supplied to them by Diamond and the direct market. By 2018, the Comicsgate spark had ballooned into a movement with a number of channels popping up, almost all of them with the same message, pleading with the industry that they'd grown up with and love. Change now before it's too late. Zach would dive into sales numbers. That umbrella guy would look at figures for companies like IDW. Ethan Van Sciver on Comic Artist Pro Secrets was dishing out the inside goss on an industry that appeared to have become rotten to its core. These brave YouTubers, backed up by tens of thousands of fans, screamed to the industry, go back, turn the boat around, or all you'll be left with is a house of cards. And what did they get in return? Hit pieces. Smears. Doxing, stalking, defamation, and tortious interference. An entire year of all the pent-up energy of Comicsgate amounted to little more than thousands of people banging their head against a brick wall. The industry was not going to listen. They weren't going to change. So we moved on. We left them and their dying business model of the direct market behind. We struck out on our own, and we supported Zach when he launched Jawbreakers, and we supported Ethan when he launched Cyberfrog, and we've supported dozens of projects since. 
and we've created our own little healthy, thriving side comic book industry here, apart from the mainstream. Creators no longer have to play by their rules. And fans get to read comics that they know are created by people with their best interests in heart and who won't trick them into buying propaganda pamphlets disguised as comic books. Fast forward to today, and the house of cards that everyone called the mainstream industry has blown over from a single cough of the coronavirus. And now everyone who laughed at us, smeared us, told us we were exaggerating when we said the industry was on its last legs, and openly engaged in a culture war against us, with a single-minded goal of destroying everything we've built, turn to us and call us disgusting for seeing our enemies get what they deserve. I'm not talking about innocent shop owners and shop employees. Anyone familiar with the history of Comicsgate will see that for the longest time, we were the shop's loudest defenders. But once it became clear that nothing was going to change, like anyone would, we had to look out for ourselves. So that's what we did. So we'll mourn for the comic book shops while understanding that progress will never be stopped, and that old industries will be replaced by new industries, as they always have. But don't expect us to weep for the Twitterati and the so-called professionals who spent the last three years willingly engaged in a culture war just to maintain control of an industry they were hollowing out from the inside. Hi. I'm Michael Bancroft, writer and artist of The Lucent. Going on five years now, I've been passionately working on my magnum opus, a fantasy graphic novel that blurs the line between dreams and reality. My first book in the series, Waking Dream, introduces readers to the mysterious world of The Lucent, a place that on the surface looks not too dissimilar from the world you know, but where nothing is quite as it seems. It's a place where powerful enemies hide in plain sight, fighting ancient battles for control of the future. Here we meet Ella Forsyth, a young woman who by all accounts appears to be living a low-key life. But in her dreams, she's hiding a secret with the power to turn everything we know upside down. Sign up now to be notified by email when this campaign goes live, and you'll receive an exclusive postcard if you go on to back the book. For regular updates, follow me on Twitter at The Lucent Comic. Together, we can create something that's truly memorable. See you at launch.